the room that we were in, the studio has many different studio rooms. The one that we were in was the main one, and it was quite large. Um, you know, you could fit almost a, you know, a small band in there, but we would just use one corner of it right in front of the window. It's kind of like a fish tank where the engineers and the director and stuff are on the other side of the window and you're on the inside. Um, with the mics hanging down, you got your, your uh, music stands with your scripts. And then in front of you is the TV monitor where they would play the, the scenes from the game. Now they didn't have all the scenes from the game. Okay. Some of them hadn't been made yet. So that's why sometimes if you see, a, if you hear a line in the game, where it seems like a pretty casual situation, but the character is like, okay, are you ready? Let's go! You know, because the line before that was this that kind of excitement. But actually, when you see it in the game, it's like, why are you yelling? Um, we didn't see the visual. We didn't get enough information to really know the scene. And so sometimes, you know, things get kind of fall through the cracks of just what exactly is the voice for. And then as far as retakes, Basically, if the director doesn't like something or it doesn't fit the timing, then they just say, okay, let's do it again. And you just quickly do it again. It was fun. It was good. We both kind of got into our characters a bit. He would get into his character and be, be kind of just cool and, and, and a bit reserved. And then I would get into my Ren mode and uh, be a little bit more wild and sarcastic. And we were standing, you know, we were recording just three feet apart from each other. So he had his mic, I had my mic, and we're both watching the same monitor. So especially like when we're handcuffed together and we're running and everything, we're practically like holding hands and like running. So we get that kind of emotion and the muscle and the, the mm -hmm. tension and the chest and the breathing and everything. And we were having our timing together. So we had a real good time doing it. Yeah, and then we became friends as well. We'd go out and have dinner or drinks together. And, and so it was, it was always very comfortable and, uh, and a lot of fun. No, um, I think uh, just aside from a couple of photos of us, you know, recording together, um, I try not to take anything, you know, scripts are pretty top secret, so yeah. you leave them there. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish, but no. <laughs> For me, I just try to really get into the character's mind. I know that sounds kind of cliche, but I just assume that I am that character and like, what would I do in that situation? And that's where the real voice actor part comes in. And that's why that's the most interesting. Um, also, I like to change my body movements. So like with Fukuhara-san, I would kind of bring my arms in and my shoulders in and be in a little type of fetal position as I was speaking, and I would get down and look up at the mic. Um, and I found that that helped me to bring out a little more of a, not necessarily a weakness, but a, a little more frailty to, to him. And um, Guizan, I would stand up straight and I wouldn't open my mouth much. Mm -hmm. And I would just kind of get steely eyed and just kind of pissed off. And I found that that helped me to do that voice. And with Ren, I just thought, I'm the biggest swinging thing out there, you know, and I don't care at all. And that just, that kind of cocky attitude helped me to really get into the character. Wow. Yeah, well, he would give us a basic direction of, you know, like Ren, I think he said, he's very sarcastic, he doesn't care about anything, he cares about money and just his own stuff. He doesn't even care about his gang members. He's just very selfish and uh, very arrogant. And and I thought, okay, that's that's a very distinct character. So I, can, I think I can do that. Um, and I gave him a couple reads. He would say, pull back a little bit or go a little bit more this way or a little higher voice or lower voice. And then once we zo zoomed in on that zone that he wanted, um, then he said, okay, let's rock. And we, we did it. I had two very strong feelings. One was first for the fans because 
they had been so loyal and dedicated and inspired through 14 years of trying to make it happen. And the Fanta formed such a bond with each other and created so many blogs and podcasts and websites and things. And after 14 years of nothing happening, still growing stronger and stronger. And that just amazed me. And so that the game was being made for them was just on the top of my list of, of happy things. Secondly, if my characters would continue, or if I could even do a new character just to be part of it, I was ecstatic. I thought that would be so fun because yeah. one and two were a blast. And I'm sure three will be even more amazing with new technology and um, the story continuing as it is. And so hopefully, I still haven't gotten word, but hopefully if I can continue in uh, Shenmue 3, I'll just be over the moon. Only Corey has gotten word so far that I know of. Um, Liesel and Paul and I um, discussed earlier um, about our being used in the game and we promised each other that uh, if one of us found out any information, we would contact the others. <laughs> he better, <laughs> because the poor guy was jumping on the boat. And just before that, he hurts his leg. And he was right there. He's good, strong, dependable. You want him in the fight. But he gets hurt and left on the docks. <laughs> It was, I was so pissed off. Um, and so he's got to come back. He's got to be redeemed. He has to have his chance to shine.